Good evening, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? Good, 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 good. We are going to get started on tonight with our Bible study. It's good to see all of you here uh, tonight, and we're going to uh, get into the Word of God and do a little uh, conversation. Not going to hold you long. Uh, I want to welcome all of the people to uh, the virtual sanctuary, those who are watching um, on their Facebook and YouTube. Um, thank you for tuning in tonight for our word study. Let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, we thank you for another chance and another privilege uh, to praise and worship your holy and righteous name. We thank you, God, for things being as well as they are, God, and we praise you, God, for things to come. Father, we will continue, God, to do our best to serve you and to serve our community, God, and to serve the people of God as you would have us to do. Thank you, Lord, for another chance to praise your name and to give you glory and honor in everything that you are worthy of. Father, you have healed bodies and you have set souls free, God. You have delivered people, God. You have made ways for people. You have provided for us, God, and for that we want to say thank you. And so, Father, in this teaching moment, I ask, God, that you would just have your way in this place, God, that you would touch somebody's heart and renew their walk with you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, good to see everybody tonight. Um, I am uh, always excited when it's an opportunity to share the word of God with the people of God and uh, we're going to get right into our lesson for tonight. I um, want to thank God for our senior pastor in his absence, Pastor Corbett. Um, we thank God for First Lady Corbett as well. And we thank God for the other ministers and all of those who make up this great body. And it's good to see y'all here tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen. With a little bit of worship and then we'll get right to the lesson. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'll sing that together. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Has He been good to you? Come on, say thank you, Lord. Say, I just want to thank you. I just, you. Come on, let's do another verse. Say, he's been so good. He's been so good. Hallelujah. Say, he's been so good. Hallelujah. So, so good. Hey, he's been so good. Yeah. So good. And I just want to thank you, Lord. You. Come on now, every hand lifted. Let him know how much you're grateful. Say thank you, Lord. in your mind and keep in your heart this week. Say thank you Lord. Yes Lord. Thank you Lord. Hey. Say thank you Lord. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you Lord. Oh. I just want to. Hey. 
wanna thank you, Lord. Hey, for putting food on my table. I wanna thank you for putting clothes on my back. I gotta thank you. But things being as well as they are, say. For allowing us to live to see another day. Ah, yeah, yeah. To thank you, Lord. Come on, clap your hands if you're grateful tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have your Bibles, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Won't be before you long tonight. Just a few things I want to talk about. We're going to be dealing with walking by faith and not by sight. Walking by faith and not by sight. When you have uh, the scripture, you can say, man, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. The Bible reads like this. For we walk by faith. Y'all finish the rest. Not by sight. Let's say it all together. For we walk by faith. And not by sight. You know, faith is uh, sometimes a very um, abstract thing. Faith can be very gray. Um, it can be uh, somewhat uncertain and unsure uh, when you think about the word and the essence of what faith is. It is your belief or your conviction of something. And all throughout the Bible, we hear uh, many of those who are teachers of the word and many of those who are preachers of the word, who proclaim the word of God, uh, talk to us about our faith, our faith in Jesus Christ, our faith in the Lord, our faith in his word, our faith in his will and the way that he has created for us. Uh, there are times where we get to a place where life is not working in our favor sometimes. Anybody ever had some trials or some situations where your faith was put to a test? A bad doctor's report, you know, um, uh, you lost something, you lost someone, just, or just having a bad day. You know, sometimes we just have bad days. But your faith, your faith is important because it is your faith that you lean on in times where you cannot lean on yourself. I realize I'm not going to insult your intelligence or, or insult anyone's intelligence to say that even as Christians, we're going to have good days every day. Because we know that's not the truth. As a matter of fact, sometimes the worst things happen to the best people. Um, you ever been in a situation where you're like, Lord, now, they ain't living worth a quarter. <laughs> and I'm, I'm coming to the church. I'm treating people right. I'm loving my neighbor. I'm sowing into the ministry. I'm serving into the ministry. I'm obeying your word. I'm praying. I'm devoting my time to you, Lord, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And it seems like the people who are just living any kind of way, doing any kind of things, saying any kind of things, they're being blessed. And many times we equate blessings to things. Because we know that there are people, we have those people in our families and even our friends that they have a lot of things but have no peace. They have a lot of things but they have no direction. And God is putting us in a place and I think even the season that we're in now with this pandemic, God is proving to us that things pass away. Things fade but our faith must be strengthened and must be strong in this season. We've watched people get sick and we couldn't touch them. We couldn't see them. We couldn't feel them. We had to assume and believe and have what? Faith that God was going to heal them. That God was going to bring them through. That God was going to give us joy even if the situation didn't turn out the way that we wanted it to do. 
Let me give you a couple of scriptures tonight because I want to give you three things. I believe three things uh, that we want to really dig into tonight as we talk about faith. I gave you 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. That's our basis for tonight, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Um, a few more that I want to, want to, uh, to, to give to you uh, as, we, as we go along. Uh, for we walk by faith and not by sight. This statement is found in Paul's context of talking about a Christian's future actually after death. What a wonderful future that should be for all Christians and those who love Jesus that after death is that we have faith and we have hope that there is a prepared place for us. Um, being assured of that now, we can have the assurance to walk securely. Somebody shout securely. Through the problems and the difficulties of this life. Yes, we're going to have problems. Yes, we're going to have uh, difficulties. Yes, we're going to have bad days, but we can walk with the assurance that God is going to be with us. Let's, 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 let's deal with the definition of some of these terms. Okay, we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, A, we, we, we. Who is we? Who is the we? The we is all of us, God's faithful people, God's faithful people. Now, remember, anytime you see uh, Paul speaking or you see Timothy speaking or Titus or any of these who are after the Gospels. Yeah, after the Gospels, you see the Apostle Paul speaking. Most of the time, he's talking to the church, okay? Most of the time, he's not just talking to everybody, but he's talking to those people who are Christians. Because his job at this time is to make sure that the faith that we've received after Jesus has gone to the cross, after he's died and, and came up with all power in his hand, Paul's job is to teach and train us how to be Christians so that we could carry out that gospel, love people while teaching that gospel, and help people to live a life that is according to that gospel. Y'all following me? So Apostle Paul is talking here to the Corinthian church. We're in the book of Corinthians. He's talking to the Corinthian church or the church at Corinth, and he's telling them, we, the children of God, walk by faith and not by sight. So you ought to put a little something, I'm a part of the we, okay? I'm a part of the we. Here it is, we walk, we walk, the word walk. We are to pursue a course of action or a way of life, how one moves along during the course of his life, how we move along, how we deal with the cares of this life, how we do things uh, in our everyday lives, we see that we're walking, you, you know, we, we, we say statements like this all the time, you know, she can talk the talk, but can she walk the walk? Y'all heard somebody say, say that before, you, you ever said that before, you know, they can talk the talk, but can they walk the walk? There is a walk that comes with this Christian journey. There is a walk that comes with this life, and the walk is not always going to be a smooth walk. There's an old church song, old gospel song um, uh, uh, that they used to sing. It says, I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain. Every now and then, you're going to have some rough sides of this mountain and this journey that you are going up. And we must understand that we as the people of God got to keep faith. On the forefront of our minds, keep our belief in God on the forefront of our minds when we're walking. Here we, here we are. I told you about the word we, told you about the word walk. I talk about the word faith. Faith is simple. I told you it can be very great, it can be very abstract, but faith is very simple. It is believing and trusting God. Following his way and following his will and following his word. And then we see the word sight, sight, that's D, sight, trusting in self and what can be perceived as human senses. It's amazing that he says we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. Let's go to the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're still in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 11, and we'll read verse 1. Somebody read that out loud for me. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, and it is the evidence of things, what? Not seen. So Paul is constantly reminding the Christian church, he is constantly reminding followers of Jesus Christ that we live our life according to faith in God. We ain't from the show me state. From Missouri, y'all know, y'all know, y'all heard that. We walk according to what the Word of God says, and some people say, you know, faith can sometimes be real crazy because it's almost like we're walking through life blinded, but just trusting and hoping that God is going to see us through, because we're walking and not able to see what's to come before us. Now we can always hope. You know, we can always hope that God is going to do some things and put some things before us. Y'all ever prayed the prayer, Lord, give me a sign? I prayed it yesterday. Lord, give me a sign. Show me this. Show me that. But God is so provident and God is so, he's so powerful that he knows our ending even before the beginning. Isn't that amazing? That God already knows the outcome of a situation even before we get to it. And so sometimes we try to jump the gun and like, Lord, just show me, show me if I'm going to win that million dollars. Or show me if I'm going to meet that right person to marry. Or show me if I'm going to be able to get that car, that house, or or that promotion on the job. And sometimes God has to take us through something that we, we seldom like to go through, a process. God sometimes has to take us through a process. And the process, uh, sometimes, Shanita, is the journey of our faith. The testing of our faith. You know, it, it, uh, life would be boring if, if God always just gave it to you right then and there. It will be nice, though, every now and then, wouldn't it? Lord, pay all my bills. I want to be debt free. And Lord, just do it in an instant. That will be nice. But it takes the fun out of the journey. Because God wants to see, are you going to put what I have put inside of you to the test? This is kind of veering off a little bit, but we'll we'll bring it back in. Why do you think the Holy Spirit gave us gifts? Many of you have gifts, spiritual gifts, to do certain things that are necessary for the process that you're going through in your life. Some of you have gifts of teaching. Some of you have gifts of administration. Some of you have gifts of um, prophecy. Some of you have gifts of love and, and, and gifts of helps. And when we have these different gifts, I want you to correlate that to the journey that you're on in your life today. You may say, well, I don't know what my gift is. Go and take you a, they have, they have spiritual gifts tests. They have personality tests. Go and take you a test. Just pull it up online and take a test and see how does it correlate to what God is doing with you in your life. And this turns us into a place where we rely on the things of God to get us through. So, three things I want to, I want to, I want to tell you that faith involves. Y'all ready? What does walking by faith involve? The first thing is, walking by faith involves a change. Walking by faith involves a change. And it is a change in self. Somebody say the change starts with me. 2 Corinthians 5, going back to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17 is a very familiar passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, this is what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We call this conversion or becoming a Christian and then obeying the gospel. If anyone is in Christ, if you have given yourself to the spirit of Christ, if you have joined into the Christian family, if you have become a part of uh, the kingdom of God as a Christian and obeying uh, the gospel and doing what Jesus has commanded you to do, uh, this is the change that we're talking about. 
Christians are brand new people on the inside. And the inside, most of the time, controls your outside. You, we saw a few weeks ago, we did baptism. Baptism is an outward sign of an inward change. Some people say, well, why do y'all baptize? Why do you get in the water and all that? We believe, especially as Christians and more so even as Baptists, we believe baptism by immersion means that we believe actually going down into the water. We don't sprinkle. We emerge. We, we, we get down in the water. And that is, a, that is symbolic of us being sinners, being washed and brought up into new life into Jesus Christ. Amen. And so there has to be a conversion. There has to be a change. And that's, these things are involved in faith. Uh, uh, at the time of conversion, one does not merely, remember this, that you do not just merely turn a, new late, or turn a new leaf. You have to begin a new life under the new master. Because before we gave ourselves to Jesus Christ, we were just living in our flesh. Or we were just living according to living according to the world standards. But when you give your life to Jesus, you're turning over uh, a new mindset. And here it is: a new creature, a new Christ Christian. Uh, we're from Second uh, Corinthians five and seventeen. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creature or new creation. He forfeits the old destiny, which is hell, and he gains a new destiny, which is heaven. And three basic, three basic changes must occur in scriptural conversion. The first change is very basic. It's the heart. Somebody shout, it's a heart thing. Your heart must be changed. Your affections must be changed from the love of sin to the love of God. Many people I know who have been converted, many people who have given their life, uh, over to Jesus, uh, they didn't have any kind of self-love, didn't love themselves, didn't appreciate what God had put on the inside of, of them. But when they came into this walk of Christianity, they realized that I need to love who God created and called me to be. Not only that, it's a heart thing, but the second thing is that our life, the life of a person must be changed from a mindset of sin to righteousness or our conduct and thirdly the state of a man must be changed from the realm of Satan's rule into the realm of God's kingdom so the three basic changes the heart the life and the state but how is this done how is this done we talk about these things that must be involved in a change how is this done it's done through obeying the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ you got to, one, hear the gospel. you got to hear the gospel. It would be a shame if we come in here every Sunday, every Wednesday, and never hear the gospel. Would you believe that there are some churches, there are some entities, that they spend a lot of time talking about them, or spend a lot of time talking about the news, or spend a lot of time talking about what's going on in the world, but never mention the gospel. And we are different than other, uh, 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 other entities or other or organisms or other organizations. You know, the church is designed to teach, to, pre to teach, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to nurture people with love. This is a training ground. It's not a place for us to just come and just, you know, look at Sally Sue over there with her pretty hat. And look at Billy Bob over there with his nice shoes. No, this is the time for us to come together, to fellowship, to worship, and to learn about God's word so that when we're living out there, we have something to combat the wiles of the devil. You know, just because you're even in here tonight, Satan is upset, he's mad, because he does not want the, the, the children of God he doesn't want the pew to be educated on the word of God. Because we know where battles begin, right? In our minds. And if Satan can get into our minds and into our thoughts and into our proclivities, then he can control everything about us. But when we fill our hearts and we fill our minds with this word and with the Holy Spirit, 
then we can move forward in the power that God has for us. But not only should we hear the gospel, because a lot of people hearing it, and they just going on, I'm like, yeah, pastor preached a good sermon today, okay, but do you believe what was preached? That's the second thing. You got to believe. You got to hear it, and you have to believe the gospel. And here it is. When you believe the gospel, things in your life will start changing. When you believe it, things will start changing, and you'll start applying the gospel to different areas of your life. A lot of people ask all the time, well, I, I don't really like to read. I really don't like to read, and how do I read the Bible? Well, I tell people all the time, I, I, matter of fact, I told a church Sunday that I was preaching that, find yourself in the text, because you're in there somewhere. I don't care how messed up you say you are or how much you're struggling. There's somebody in that word. There's somebody in the Holy Bible that has gone through what you're going through and many times in a worse, worse sense than you have. And if God can deliver those people, surely he can deliver us. The Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. And so things that we're struggling with today, somebody else, they got the T-shirt, they got the hat and the cup for it. And so we have to learn to really trust and believe in the gospel. Then we have to learn how to repent. We have to repent. Now, this, this may sound harsh, but I'm saying it in love. But we have to be a people of repentance. You know, repentance means not just changing our mind, but changing our ways, changing our actions. Now, let me pause right here and say Nobody in here and nobody that will ever come in here is perfect. Everybody got that one or two or three or four, five, six different things that we have hanging up in our little closet. But as long as we are striving to get closer to Jesus, you know what sin really does? Everybody got the idea of what sin is, but this is the basis of what sin is. Sin is anything that disconnects you from the fellowship of God. You down in yourself, not believing in yourself, that's a sin. See how, see how, see, see how we, we get quiet on stuff like that. But if I start talking about lesbianism and homosexuality and all that, we get excited. We, we, we want to shout about that. Oh, yeah, that's a sin. But doubting that God can heal you is a sin. And so we have to make sure that we're training our thoughts to think towards the things of God and not things that separate us from God. Not only repentance, but confession. Confession. What is your allegiance to? Who is your allegiance to? And I say this, and I, you know, I step on toes all the time when I say it, but you know, hey, I, you know, I can be the bad guy sometimes, you know, as long as the Lord is pleased with me. I tell people all the time, some people are more Baptist than they are Christian. Some folk get more caught up in a, in a church covenant than they do the Holy Bible. Some people are more caught up in a communion table than the actual power of taking communion. So what is our allegiance to? What is our allegiance to? We have to confess Christ beyond the things of the church. Here, here are some things you, you can confess Christ about being a good father, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife, a good sister and a brother, being a good neighbor, loving your neighbor as yourself. Not only that, baptism, baptism, obeying the gospel of Christ through baptism for the remission of sin, changing one's state or relationship. You're not guilty anymore once you give yourself over to the Lord. You're not lost anymore once you give yourself over to the Lord. You are saved. When we say we're saved, we're not saying that we're churchy. That's what we think sometimes we hear, well, I'm saved, you know. No, it, it, it ain't even about being churchy because some folks, they, they got church down pat. They, they look like church. They got the language down. They got the lingo down. They know how to sit and all that kind of stuff, especially depending on the culture that they come from. 
If you come from a more uh, charismatic culture, they know how to shout, they know how to run, dance, holler back at the preacher and all that. If they come from a more conservative background, they know how to sit there and take notes and look and all that kind of stuff. And that's not, that shouldn't be the basis of your salvation. It should be on how you receive the word of God and apply it to your life and how you spread it and share it with other people. Romans 10 and 7. Romans 10 and 7. I'm sorry, 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. This is what the Bible says. So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Second thing. Not only does it involves a change, but walking by faith involves knowing, believing, and obeying the right things. Knowing, believing, and obeying the right things. I just quoted this scripture to a friend uh, yesterday, last night, actually. Actually, no, it was my sister-in-law. We were on the phone, and we were talking. I was joking with her, and I just quoted the scripture, didn't know where it was, but I, but I knew the scripture. Proverbs 14 and 12. I want you to write this particular scripture down. Proverbs 14 and 12. Anytime you think that, um, that you can outsmart God about anything, I want you to remember this scripture right here. Proverbs 14 and 12. The Bible says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. That scripture is something else, ain't it? There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The path that seems right may offer many options, but it may require few, and it may require few sacrifices, but it is not the way that God always wants you to go. Easy choices should always make us take a second look. If it's too easy to get in, it's probably easier to get out or harder to get out. <laughs> the right choice often requires hard work and self-sacrifice. Don't be enticed by apparent shortcuts that seem right and popular. We got a big issue with that now. Everybody want to do what's popular. Everybody want to do what everybody else are doing. But these things are not found in the pages of God's holy word. We got to obey the right book. Not just the writings of men, but the Bible. The mind of God on paper. We got a lot of people that put their philosophy out and what they think. But what does God even the situation that you may be in right now. I want you to just pause for a moment. The situation that you may be dealing with right now, or it may be multiple situations. You have a mindset of how you want to overcome it, but pause and ask yourself, what would God have me to do to overcome this? How would God bring me out of this thing? How can I apply my faith to do what needs to be done? Any questions? Any, any, anybody? Have anything you want to add or, or say? I'm in, I'm in my zone, but I, I can pause. All right? We good? We all right? We got to obey the right doctrine. We got to obey the right doctrine. Matthew 15 and 9. Listen to this. Matthew 15 and 9. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. I don't ever want to hear the Lord have to say that about us, that we worship him in vain. But the truth of the matter is, some people are. Their heart is not in worship. Their body might be in it, but their mind is not in it. Their heart is not in it. And so they're just doing what they see other people do. The Bible talks about uh, praying and, and how we should it. Uh, a desire to pray to be heard. You know, some folk, y'all y'all know how, how we've done historically in the church, you know, that, oh, they can really pray. Well, what does that mean? Because the prayer is not for the people. The prayer is to God. And a lot of times we have to check ourselves and say, okay, 
Now, people may be pleased with what I'm doing, but what does God say about what I'm doing? I tell the praise team all the time, I say, you know what? There may be times where the pew may never respond to what we're doing. But as long as the Lord is getting the glory out of what we're singing and what we're doing, and that's why I'm, I'm very particular about song selections. Very particular about song selections. I don't care how new it is or how old it is. There are some things we just shouldn't sing in church, even if it do got the word God or Jesus in it. Because some of these songs glorify the singer more than they glorify the Savior. And even in some of our sermons and our teachings, we have to learn that everything that we do ought to be up towards God. It ought to lead people to the mind and the love of Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. And I want you to go back and read these scriptures on your own. 1 Timothy 4 and 1 says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Here it is that Timothy is prophesying that, that, that the Spirit of God is saying that in the latter days, which are probably the days right now, people who were once Christians are going to forsake the teachings and the truth of God's Word. 2 John chapter 9. 2 John chapter 9. It says, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. We got to learn how to obey, not just have a change, because God changes us for a reason. He changes your heart for a reason, because he knows where he's taking you to. You can't take the old mindset with you. Even when God blesses us, you notice how sometimes when God blesses and when God uh, pours favor on us, he has to take us through a trial sometimes. And when you come out of that trial, you're like, I'm a different person. I'm a new person. He gives you a new mindset to go into the future that he has for you. That's why it's important that this room ought to be full on Wednesday nights, even more so than Sunday morning. Because at some point, we have to pause, slow it down, and really hear the truth of the tenets of Scripture. So that we can have a moment to really dissect and digest what the Word of God is saying. Amen? So it's not just a change, but you must, what did I tell you? You must, uh, it, walking by faith involves a change, but I just told you walking by faith involves knowing Believing and what? Obeying the right things. But thirdly and finally, walking by faith involves maintaining focus. Walking by faith involves maintaining focus. Y'all remember when, um, when, when, when Jesus and the disciples were on the water and Peter, uh, Peter stepped out and he walked on the water with Jesus but then as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, what did he do? Start sinking. We have to maintain our focus in this season. And there are so many things around us that are trying to grab our attention, trying to get our minds off of Christ, trying to get our minds off of the things of Christ to make us feel that Christ is not there. Sickness is a thing that has tried to take our mind off of Christ. But sometimes when you're hurting, you focus more on the pain than you do the future of the healing. You know what I, you know what I started doing? And, and it's not an easy thing, but one thing that I start doing is, is, is if I'm ever sick, I try to, to, I try to uh, train myself to pray, Lord, teach me how to be grateful for the healing that I know you're going to do for me. Because I have the faith that you're going to heal me. But, Lord, teach me how to be grateful for when you bring me through it. Teach me how to be grateful for providing for me, God, even though I'm experiencing loss right now. You see, we got to learn how to praise God beyond our problems. 
we got to praise God beyond what we're dealing with and what we're going through. I'm talking about in your car. I'm talking about at the house, sitting on your couch or in the bed with, with the shades down. And it seems like it, it seems like it's more sense to more sensible to be depressed and, and down and out. But you have to train your mind to say, you know what? I'm going to focus on the glory of God and I'm going to focus on the outcome that I want him to bring for me. So as long as Peter was focused on Jesus, he was successful in walking on the waters of the Sea of Galilee. But when he began to focus on the wind and the waves, he began to sink. What happened, y'all? He changed his focus. He lost his focus. His faith, his, 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 his faith began to waver when he realized what he was doing. And sometimes, I told y'all earlier, faith can be crazy sometimes. Because you'll find yourself believing things that don't make sense, human sense. But there's a scripture in the book of 1 Corinthians, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I believe. Um, it talks about, it says, the foolishness of God is more wiser than the wisdom of man. It says, the weakness of God is more stronger than the strength of man. Then it goes further to say, God will take the foolish things to confound the wise. So there are some things that don't seem right to us, don't seem like it's sensible to us, but God will use a foolish thing to bring about change in our lives. I want to encourage you tonight to not walk by sight. I want you to walk by faith. It's not an easy thing. It's not a, not a you know, just... Puzzle, puzzle that you can just put together it's a process and many times the process is the journey of our lives what we deal with, what we go through on an everyday basis, our faith is constantly being tested y'all in the climate that we live in now with this sickness and with political climate and with, uh, with, with racial tension, with, with governmental issues that are going on, with things going on in our families and with our children and, and just the way of the world, society, our faith is constantly tested. And so what we cannot do, as he told the Hebrews, he said, do not stop coming to the house of God. Scripture says, forsake not to assemble yourselves together. I know some people say, well, I don't feel safe in the church and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you, when you have faith and mix a little common sense in there with it, because you need some common sense. I know, I know that the pandemic, the COVID-19 has, 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 has frightened us and all of that, but we know a God who just like he can heal a headache, he can heal COVID. He can heal anything. That's why Pastor Corbett continues to say we're moving cautiously but courageously. Moving cautiously but courageously. Y'all know for uh, the past uh, three years, the, 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 uh, the vision for the church was strength and courage. We got t-shirts for it. Strength and courage. Because we believe that God is going to give us the strength to handle anything that Satan puts before us. Or anything that the Lord puts before us, he's going to give us strength. And he's going to give us courage to come out of it. Amen? Amen. So let's continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Any questions? Any comments? Any testimonies? Any prayer requests? Before we close tonight? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Any prayer requests or testimony? No, we all we all good. Everybody good. All right. Amen. Let's pray. Father, first we thank you, God, for this opportunity, God, to teach your word. I thank you, God, that you can teach it better than I can. Thank you that your Holy Spirit, God, never forsakes us and never leaves us. God, we thank you tonight, God, for Sister Selena, God. We thank you for her faith to believe that you can heal Brother Collier. And so, Father, we thank you, God, that you have allowed the surgery to take place, God, and, God, that you would uh, go in and that you would allow him to be healed. 
touch his body, God. Touch his mind. God, while you're doing that, I pray, God, that you would cover each and every individual under the sound of my voice. Those who are watching, God, thank you, God, that you are able to heal, to set free, to deliver. Many of us are experiencing things, God, that we never thought we would be going through. But we trust in you. We can't see how you're going to bring us out, but we believe that you're going to do it. We don't know how you're going to do it, God, but we believe and we trust in you. Father, we pray for this world. I pray, to God, that you would open our eyes and we would realize, God, that it's so much easier to love one another than it is to hate. You would show us, God, but you've always designed for us to live in unity and in harmony. I thank you, Lord, that no matter what Satan throws on us, you have more power. And so, Father, we lift your name. You said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me. Thank you, Lord. We need your grace. Even in the times, God, when we mess up, God, and we need to be forgiven, God, we ask for that forgiveness. We need your grace. We're not perfect. Don't always think the right thoughts. Don't always do the right things. But, God, because we're connected to you, we ask that you would continue to cleanse us. We love you tonight. Thank you tonight. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap those hands and let's celebrate the Lord. We're walking by faith and not by sight. Listen, listen, this Sunday, this Sunday, we are going to be uh, celebrating our fathers, our fathers. Uh, it's Father's Day this Sunday. So uh, when you see a father, give him a fist bump or elbow, whatever he's comfortable with. Amen. And, and tell them how much he is appreciated. Amen. Amen. Now, we went all out for the mothers, and we, we gave y'all a whole month, women. Gave y'all a whole month, and I told y'all y'all was supposed to give the men a whole month, but, you know, it's okay. Our time coming. Amen. But we want to make sure we celebrate and show how much we appreciate our fathers. Listen, this Saturday, this Saturday, I believe at 730, I believe at 730, uh, we will uh, be at Emerson River Park again. Emerson River Park uh, this Saturday early in the morning. We're going to be walking. We're going to be walking. So uh, uh, make yourself get up, you know, push yourself. If you got to drink a little coffee or a little Red Bull or whatever you need to do to get yourself going, uh, come and walk. I believe we had a great turnout the last. I see some people in here who were there. Amen. And, and it's good fellowship. It's good fellowship. Um, I'll give you my, my personal my personal testimony. I hadn't made it out to walk yet, and I probably, I'm trying to make it, but my schedule is not allowing me. But um, I started I started working out personally. I started working out with a, I look, how I look. I got a long way to go. <laughs> but um, I start working out with a trainer, and, and Tony, I've been, you know, I've been saying I'm going to do it, you know, but it had to be the right person. You know, it had to be the right person. Um, who could deal with the side of me that y'all don't want to see? Um, we do it down in the gym, and um, and and he he pretty much can handle my mouth, cause you know, once I get halfway through, you know, <laughs> it's another story. I had to pull the inhaler, out, you know, and everything else, you know. But um, I, I'm telling you this because um, we got to do things and lead by example, you know. Um, we need to be a healthy church. And not just spiritually healthy, but we need to be physically healthy. It don't make no sense. We can jump and shout and praise God on Sunday. And then every time you go to the doctor, they talk about something wrong with your heart. or Something wrong with this, something wrong with that. The people of God ought to be healthy. Amen? Amen? Now, don't mess with my fried chicken and my collard greens just yet. Just yet. <laughs> I'm working on that. Y'all pray for executive pastor. I'll, I'll get there with that. But, um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's do what we can to try to live a healthy and a whole life. Listen, our church is centered around being a holistically 
healthy church. We want you to prosper not just in spirit. We want you to prosper in spirit, in soul, in mind. Uh, last year, when the, well, when the pandemic first started, um, y'all know we were having Bible study was so, so different. We, we, for about three or four weeks, we were talking about mental health. Brought a mental health expert in, and we were just talking on Bible study night, correlating it to the Bible. And so we're going to do more things like that. Amen. But you, you got to show up. You got to show up. Church that's watching, you got to show up. You got you to tune in. You got to show up. Um, there, and we, we want to do more things for our children throughout the week. Um, today we had a, whoo, we had all kind of, all kind of people here today. Maybe about almost 2,000 uh, uh, young people were on this campus today. And they had to turn over half of them away, over more than half of them away. Um, because uh, there was a little glitch in registration. Um, there's an organization that the church is partnering with, um, and they are advocating for our young people to practice safe sex. Amen? And if anybody ought to advocate for it, it ought to be the church. Come on, somebody. It ought to be the church. Amen? We, we, ought, to, we ought to be at the forefront of issues like that because it's our babies who are getting STDs and teen pregnancies and different things. Um, and we need to make sure that we are teaching our young people the way, first the way of Christ, and that's the way till you get married. But just in case that slip your brain, you need to do it the right way. Amen? And so we want to make sure that we're doing it. So we partnered with this organization, and it, like I said, it was a little glitch in, on their end when it came to registration, and it's okay, you know. Um, they capped it off at a certain number, and so we had a bunch of, we had the whole city of Macon in front of the church this morning. Um, you know, some of them were raising sand, but you know, it's all right. I look at everything like a family reunion. Some people going to be mad. Some people going to be happy. We all going to eat at some point. Amen. Amen. So let's stand. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. And let's remember, uh, this is also Communion Sunday coming up. We'll be taking communion. Amen. And so let's prepare. Uh, for that as well. Please be in prayer for Pastor Corbett and his family. Let's be in prayer for Shay. Uh, she's doing well and she had to go to the doctor. They're doing some more stuff, looking at some more stuff. So let's keep them in prayer. They may have to travel a little bit to Atlanta. So uh, keep him and keep Lady Corbett in prayer uh, and so many. Listen, tonight I am meeting with some law enforcement people of our church and some brothers of our church if most of you have heard about some of the recent incidents that's been going on um, throughout our country and even in our very own neighborhood in in one of robins um, our, one of our sister churches was uh, all could have could have definitely made headline news as far as active shooting and all of that and so we are actually um, meeting tonight we're going to put a plan in place for lundy chapel amen because one place you ought to be safe is the house of god Amen. And so we are going to do everything we can to put your mind at ease um, so that uh, um, just in case somebody that's looking kind of funny do show up, we know what to do. We know how to treat the situation. Amen. All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, you are great and you are worthy of all the praise and all the honor. Thank you for what has taken place on tonight. I thank you for these faithful and dedicated people who have come to hear your word. I pray now, God, that you would burn a fire inside of them that would cause them to continue to thirst after your truth, to thirst after your love and after your word. And God, protect them even as they leave this place tonight. Even those who are watching via live stream, God, touch them in a special way. And God will forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Y'all have a good night. Thank you for watching us on live stream as well. Y'all have a good night. Thank you.